All right, in this knife talk video, we're gonna be talking about this knife. This is the Great Eastern Cutlery Northfield number 82 Dixie Stockman, or stock knife, in sandbar stag. And this is a, a really cool knife that I'm really glad to have gotten. Um, and it's one that I got because I have this knife, which is the 53 Cuban Stockman in burnt stag. Um, so I, I wanted to see if I could get and enjoy um, a stag version of the 82 stock knife, which is the other of Great Eastern Cutlery Stockman patterns that I really like. I have this knife, which is from the previous run in 2014, and it's a knife that I really like and have enjoyed and used a lot. So first off, let's talk about the knife. Um, if you've seen my one minute overview, you've seen some of this, but this is a serpentine frame, so you can see how it has kind of an S curve to it. It's an equal end, and it's a Stockman style knife. So what that means is that there's two springs, and one of the springs holds the main blade, which is a full size blade, and the other spring holds the two secondary blades, which are both a little shorter so that they can fit in on the same spring there. Uh, a typical Stockman, and this is a great example, has a clip point. Now this actually isn't the most traditional clip point. This is a, another style of Turkish clip point or slender clip point that Great Eastern Cutler uses other than the one on uh, the 82. But then it's usually a clip point and then a sheep foot, which is what this is here sheet foot blade and then finally looks like I got some grit in there finally a spade blade so that's what this is uh, and you can see this does have the same designation for the main blade an eight so that the first two numbers are the pattern number and then this third number is the designation for the main blade so th they do consider this to be the same blade shape as on the 82 whereas so this has clip point sheet foot spade blade. Whereas on the 82, you have, again, a clip point, but a slender clip point and a more slender clip point than on the 53. And they did make some 53s with normal uh, larger clip points. And then instead of a sheep foot, there's a worn clip. So the edge is more gentle of a curve, more continuous of a curve, versus here, where it's a more abrupt curve to, to the spine. Then the third blade on the 82 is a drop point rather than the spay blade. So I'll get the spay blade out here. So the spay blade has some has a little drop, almost a clip, and then a really, really ab abrupt belly. Whereas the drop point just has a continuous drop and only a slight drop, and then a more gradual belly. So I actually really like the blade shape combination on this 82. And that's why I got one earlier on the 2014 run. And I've used and enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I have these blades sharpened down to nice thin edges um, and I've used them a lot. They've got some patina on that one, less patina on this blade because I use it for cutting cardboard and stuff. And then that one I kind of keep sharp. Uh, that's what I like about a Stockman also is that the main blade is great for food prep and things like that. The uh, straight edge blade, the Warncliffe on this, is great for cutting cardboard and opening letters and such. And then you can keep the third blade nice and sharp for if you need a sharp blade. And also, um, this would be a great like skinning, uh, mostly for a small game, but you could use that as a skinning blade. Um, now, uh, I want to compare, first off, the two versions or the two runs of the 82. So one of the first things that you notice other than the handle material difference is that the bolsters are slanted on the 2014 version. They do that kind of thing to differentiate them. You can see that there's two uh, lines versus one line um, and they do that kind of thing to just to differentiate them. Uh, I like the slanted bolsters. I think that they look good. But I like the, the straight uh, bolsters also. I, I, it's not like a sticking point for me. Um, another similarity is that both have a nail cutout for the uh, nail nick on the um, drop point. 
Now the nail net, the cutout is larger on the 2014 version, but it seems to be totally adequate on this 2018 version. Um, another difference here is the pull strength. So um, the, the pull strength is definitely stronger on the 2014. I'd call the main blade a six, a little bit, a nice amount of snap. And the second, the Warncliffe, I'd call a five, nice amount of snap. And same deal there on the drop point. On this one, and this is a new knife, I haven't used it, I haven't really broken it in, but I'd call it more of a five on the main blade and uh, four on the secondaries, pretty much a four on both secondaries. Um, but they all snap close, they all work well, um, and really a lighter pull is, is a good thing generally on a using knife, as long as it actually snaps close, which these do. Another thing I wanna compare uh, with this um, well, first off, I want to mention that I really like that it's part of the design of this pattern to have the nail nick cut out or the um, cut out for the drop point blade. I actually added this cut out on this 53 for the spay blade uh, because I wanted to drop the kick a little bit on that blade. And to do that, I needed to be able to get to it. So um, I uh, had to put this um, cut out. And I think that it's a good feature. Um, so that's, that's that, uh, that's another thing I really like about the 82. Now, another thing that's different on these two, he, uh, runs, it, at least in the two that I, I actually have had two of this knife. This is the second that I had. I, I sold one relatively quickly after getting it and then ended up getting one back. Uh, but both, in both cases, the Warncliffe blade and the drop point blade we're pretty close together. Actually, they are rubbing on this. Um, and uh, the other thing was that the the drop point was pretty close to being proud when I got it on this one, as well, uh, and also the, the main blade was. So that actually did lead to, you can see that there's some uh, scuffing right there that uh, is from the blades rubbing. And also on this blade. So that is, you know, one downside that doesn't seem to be a problem on this newer version. So the blades are fit really, really well on this knife. Um, if you can see it, there is a space, a definite space between the Warrencliffe and the drop point. And the Warrencliffe goes closer to the main blade. Um, that's not a problem. You know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna rub there. What I mean is that it looks like it's been cranked uh, over to the side a little bit better and cranking is when they bend the blade at the tang where it's softer so that it fits better and the drop point also seems to to fit in a little bit better and then finally and this is a big thing for me um, that I often have to fix on GEC knives and I'm very happy to not have to on this knife is that the the tips are nowhere near being proud so like I said on that one the the tip came pretty close to proud. It's actually nowhere near proud uh, for the main bl blade on this one. And I don't know what that is. I don't know if, if they changed the engineering. I, I know I've talked with Randy who does some of the engineering there and he's an interesting guy and I think he does a good job and, and I don't know if he changed something or if they just, you know, it happened to be on this knife that I got lucky, but um, the drop point tip is also nowhere near proud. So I really, really appreciate that. Um, and again, you know, everything works great. You can see that there's really no gaps at all um, on the back springs or between the bolsters and the handle material. Just a really, really well-made knife. Um, really no complaints. Other than, here's one thing that I did notice, is that the tip of the Warrencliffe, you can see that there's a little bit of discoloration. Now, this actually, almost turned into a positive for me because I got this knife and I was thinking about that and I wanted to check on it. So I uh, called Grady's from Cutlery, um, spoke with someone uh, and asked whether that was a problem. Um, and they said that they'd get an answer. And actually Bill, uh, Bill Howard, the, the owner and head of the company, uh, answered the phone uh, and he said, First of all, uh, he told me, you know, that it could be 
you know, an issue, um, but it probably wasn't. And they could fix it if I sent it in, they could polish it off and it would be fine and everything. Uh, and then he actually asked what my name was and uh, I told him that my name was Logan and amazingly he asked if I was the Logan who visits and he you know, knew who I was. Um, so that's always nice. I mean, I go there once, twice, once or twice, maybe three times in a year, but really just for the rendezvous. And, uh, you know, he knows that I have a lot of their knives and I've, and I use a lot of their knives. And to be honest, I think he appreciates that I use all of the knives of theirs that I have. Uh, I think Bill makes the knives to be used and, and he appreciates that I do use them. So, um, after he, you know, realized who I was, um, he said, well, are you going to use the knife? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, you know, it'll, it'll go away. And I said, yeah. And really the reason I was interested in checking out whether that was a problem is because I was worried that it would affect the heat treat. And he said that it won't affect the heat treat. And I trust him. He obviously knows what he's doing. So I'm not too worried about that discoloration at the tip anymore, because he did say that it, there's very little chance that it would affect the heat treat. So um, really no issues with the construction. But again, to talk about one of the things that I really, really like about this knife is the stag. So I'm not always a fan of stag, and Bill actually said uh, when I was talking to him that um, sometimes you, he, he spends a lot of time matching the stag, uh, and sometimes they look really good until all of the finishing happens and then they don't look quite as even. This is super even stag, um, and I was able to pick this out you know, look at pictures and pick this one out. And wow, look how evenly matched that is. So you can see that there's white on both sides from them grinding uh, to match it to the bolsters on both sides. And it's really, really even. Look from here, how it matches up perfectly there and there. Um, and the, the center with the dark area, really smooth, really well polished, but still leaves that nice kind of gnarly stag look on both sides really, really well matched. I mean, Bill did an incredible job on this one. Um, and then also look at the, the thickness. So that's another thing about stag. Sometimes stag can be too thick. Sometimes it can be too thin. This is perfect for me. A little bit of thickness, not too much to where it's going to be uncomfortable to carry. And that's another thing I like about this knife, you know, pretty thin stag, but also has some character to it. Uh, so I am very, taken with this knife I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be keeping it and using it and it's gonna you know go alongside this one now uh, the other Stockman patterns that I like from gradation cutlery are the 81 Stockman and the uh, 68 owl which is a smaller version of this basically um, I don't have those two I gave one of the 80 ones to my dad um, but they did make stag in both of those, I believe. So something I might try to get in the future. But for now, the real question that remains for me is what about this knife? So I like that the stag doesn't have a shield. That's one of the things that I don't like about this knife. I, I don't hate the unexcelled shield, but I don't love it either. Um, I really like this color of this handle material, but I, you know, the jigging is okay. Um, I'm generally not like the hugest fan of jigging. That's why I didn't go with the uh, elderberry jig bone for for this run. Um, you know, the jigging I think is better looking on the mark side on this knife than on the show side. You can see it's kind of rough right there. I mean, it's good looking jigging if you like jigging. I just don't generally prefer jigged bone. Um, so uh, I really like this knife and I've used it a lot. And it, you know, it has more snap. Um, than, than this one. Yeah, it's pretty close. Anyway, um, <clears throat> but I, I can't keep both. Um, I don't want to keep this one as a safe queen. I just don't get enjoyment out of my knives if I keep them and don't at least display them. And right now I display my rendezvous knives. That's my only, uh, safe queen collection. Although I've used all of those except for the last two years. So you know, I don't know if you can call it a safe queen collection, but I don't use them anymore. I just display them and I just really don't get as much enjoyment out of knives if I don't use them. So I do think that I'm going to sell this knife because I just, I would be remiss to, to, to not keep this knife, to not use it, to not enjoy it. And this is, I think, I really think 
one of the best knives I've ever gotten from Gradation Cutlery, if not the best knife. Um, it brings together the classic nature of the Stockman with uh, the classic, you know, handle material, and then a little bit of modernness with those, you know, updated blade shapes. And, you know, these blades are CNC grounded, I can assume. Um, so, you know, they're gonna be ground really well with that modern machinery. It's just a real, I think, success on Great Eastern Cutlery and Bill Howard and Will Howard, Will William Howard's part, uh, Bill Jr. Uh, <clears throat> so just, just a, a great job on, on this knife. Um, and everyone at Grady's from Cutler, I mean, and all of the all of the people working there really put into making these knives because it's a step-by-step -step process. And this is just a real victory. I'm definitely going to be putting up a review on Blade Forums. I'm gonna put this video on Blade Forums with a review. Um, check out my one minute overview on this if you haven't, but uh, it's just a really, really great knife and it's one that I'm really happy to have gotten. It's a more expensive knife, um, but really I think it's a good price for, for what it is and uh, not as expensive as I had to pay to get this as my uh, on the secondary market getting this one so um, again really really happy with this knife really looking forward to you know using it the the snaps getting better as the, I haven't had this very long the snaps getting much much nicer as I am opening and closing it so I think it just needed to work out some of the you know factory uh, oil and such um, but just a really great knife um, by all means if you can get one of these 82 patterns get one they're doing a two blade pattern which actually I think is is one that I want also um, it's gonna be the clip point main blade and then a Warncliffe secondary on the same spring only a one spring knife that is going to be a very very practical traditional knife uh, so I highly suggest if you can't get one of these in Stag and you'd like the Stockman version, get one in the Canvas Micarta or the Elderberry Jig Bone. Either is going to be great. And if you can't get any of those, or if you'd prefer a two blade, by all means, try the what they're calling the Possum Skinner, which is the two blade with the Clip Point Main and the Warren Cliff Secondary. Um, so the 82 pattern, I think, is one of Gradation's best, and this is one of their best knives I've ever gotten. So big thanks to Bill uh, and everyone at Great Eastern Cutlery, and also I got this knife from traditionalpocketknives.com, so thanks to them for quick shipping and uh, for taking individual pictures so that I could pick out this really, really incredible stag and this particular knife. So if you've enjoyed this video, please like it, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I try to answer all of them. Um, if you like this video and this kind of video, please subscribe. I've got a whole lot of other videos and we'll have more coming up. And don't forget to go out and do good.